In this video, I'm going to be sharing three specific questions that you should be asking yourself when determining if now may be the best time for you to get into real estate. Hi, I'm John Mikish, and on this channel, I share proven strategies and tools that I use to grow and scale my real estate company and become a top producer in my marketplace. So a question I've been getting a lot recently is, is now a good time to get into real estate? And the people are coming to me almost kind of deflated in when they're asking. Maybe they've been thinking about getting into real estate for a while. Maybe you've been thinking about getting into real estate. And you know, the market's been really, really good for the last, you know, many handful of years. But now you find yourself in a market where you hear is changing or it has changed and you're asking yourself, oh man, did I miss my opportunity? Is now still a good time to get into real estate? And I think the question you're really asking is, do the market conditions matter? Like, does it matter what the market's doing, whether it's a good market, a down market, an up market? Does that matter to you? And does that affect your opportunity to get into real estate? And I think the simple answer is it does not. And here's why. If we look at results from last year versus, you know, where we're at already this year. Yeah, the market is down in most areas, meaning in most areas, there's less transactions happening. But there's also another component to that factor, which is there's less real estate agents as well. Many agents have already gotten out or are getting out of the business. So as we look at you know, the market on a national level, we're gonna end this year with approximately 30 to 40% less real estate agents than we started last year with. So yeah, there were more sales last year, but there was also more agents. So when we take those two things into consideration, there could very well be just as many deals per agent in your market right now. So when I went through the last recession in our market, you know, deals were down 30, 40%, but our realtor database, that is the amount of realtors we had in our MLS was down 50%. So there was actually in the last recession, more agents, more deals per, per agent than there were when the market was great right before the recession. So just keep that in mind. I think market conditions don't really matter as much as the next two questions that I'm going to ask you to consider. And the next question is, should I join an existing real estate team or should I go at this alone? Should I just, you know, be an agent doing it myself? And the, ask, the answer to that question is really is going to depend, but you have to first understand what are the benefits of going at it alone or joining a team? And if we isolate the team for a minute, some of the benefits of joining a team is that they're gonna have existing, or they should have existing lead generation strategies and pillars in place. That means that if you're brand new and, and you really need to make money fast, it may be more important for you to make money fast than to make as much money as possible. So let's break that down for a minute. What does that mean? Well, if you join an existing real estate team and they can put you into the team and you can instantly start getting leads and start transacting with people, you could get to dollars quicker. So if you're leaving a job where you were getting a paycheck and now you're getting into real estate and you need money fast, or even if you're already in real estate and you've been floundering and you're like, man, I don't know if I can maintain this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it you may consider joining a team that's demonstrated a good ability of generating leads in their marketplace and that has an abundance of leads or an opportunity for you to partake in those leads that they're already generating versus starting from scratch, starting new, you know, having to build all of that, having to put those pillars in place, it's going to take longer to get leads, to convert those leads and ultimately to get new contracts that then have to close. So if you're wanting to make as much money as possible, that's not gonna be joining a real estate team, but making as much money per deal as possible doesn't actually always result in as much money in your pocket. So be looking at those different options as, hey, you know, I might get, for example, 50 cents on the dollar if I go put my license with this team, but if I can get three closings in the next 90 days, that's going to equal X amount of dollars in my marketplace. And that may be enough for you versus saying, well, if I go over here, I can get 95% of my commission, but of what commission you're going to have to go build the tools, build the systems, build the lead generation to even get a lead that you can then convert, that you can then turn into a client that you can then get under contract that you can then ultimately close on a house. 
So be thinking about that question too. You know, I would say that if you have a situation where you don't need the money and you want to come in and you want to make as much as possible on each commission deal, then maybe find a mentor and hold you accountable to getting those things set up and showing you the shortcut path to success there. Um, and that's one of the things that we do every day with agents is we consult and we mentor and we coach and we train and we help those agents become proficient on their own. But that takes a little bit longer than just simply walking into an existing office that's running and firing on all cylinders where you can start to get deals and close those deals immediately or as immediate as possible in real estate. So be thinking about that. And the third question that you should ask is what company should I affiliate with? Now, the thing to understand about real estate is if you're new to this game and you're just starting to get into it, is it's not like a job interview. You know, in a job interview, you may be going to apply for a job and they might have one position and 100 applicants. That's an interview process where you're gonna have to, you know, fight and earn your ability to get that one spot. In real estate, there is no limited number of spots. And what that means is that almost every broker wants every agent they can get. Now, when you start niching down to some real estate teams, the teams may have limited bandwidth, limited leads, limited spots, and therefore they may be actually more concerned than the brokers or the firm owners because they might say, hey, I've only got five seats that I can really provide for in this opportunity that they've created. So they may be more selective. They may be looking for things like core value alignment, a higher level of accountability. Whereas what we see a lot of times with real estate brokerages is that if you have a pulse, if you're breathing, they'll take you because they're not really investing anything into you. They're investing into a structure that's scalable, that can hold as many people as possible. And they're willing to take you on, on the chance that you're gonna sell a house because they're gonna get paid. And if you don't, you don't really cost them anything anyway. So just know that going into it is like, you're likely gonna sit down with brokers and they're all gonna want you. And they're all gonna promise you the sun, the moon, the stars. The thing you have to keep in mind if you're new is that there is going to be a place that you're gonna do better. It's not one size fits all. It's not, hey, I like this sign over here. I like this office over there. It's more about what can they do to coach, mentor, and provide for you so that you can get up and running quickly and start doing some real estate transactions. Because if you don't do any transactions, it doesn't matter how nice the office is. It doesn't matter that there's X top producer that works there. What matters is what are you gonna get out of the transaction? So if you sign up with a broker and they're offering to pay you X amount of dollars or X amount of percentage in your split, what are you getting in return for that? And one of the reasons that I ultimately merged my company with eXp Realty is because eXp Realty provided more value than any other broker out there, including myself. And I thought, hey, we were doing an amazing job. We were an independent brokerage. We had things really dialed in and agents were having a lot of success with us. But I still, when I looked at the ESP value proposition and all the different multiple income streams that there were and the unlimited amount of coaching and training and mentoring, I saw an opportunity for me to plug into that and plug my people into that. And I felt like they were getting more than I could ever offer them on my own. So when you go sit down with a broker, you know, a traditional brokerage out there, that's one broker, maybe a couple employees that are your point of contacts and your value transfer from them to you for whatever you're paying them. Whereas EXP, you're gonna get, you know, tons of coaches and mentors. You know, we pride ourselves on the coaching and mentoring that we provide our organization. And also the direct connection of, hey, you can reach out to me and I can help you through whatever challenges you're going through. Whether you're brand new looking to get started, whether you're already on a team and you're looking to scale, whether you are a team leader and you're looking to scale to provide more value for members, we've done all those things so we can help you do it too. And a lot of times it's that understanding that, well, if I work for this broker, I have the help of that broker, but who else do you have besides that? In our model, we have tons and tons of agents in the organization, thousands at this point that all wanna see you succeed and help you. So, you know, if you're in that situation right now and you're really questioning, should I get into real estate? Be thinking about these three questions that we pose today and also be thinking about, hey, beyond the market conditions, beyond the team, whether I join a team or go independent, beyond the brokerage I'm with, what is it that I want my career to look like and what would success look like for me? And when we have a conversation with somebody, like if I was talking to you one-on-one -on -one right now, over the phone or over Zoom, I'd wanna really understand what does success in your first year look like to you? 
And if you can adequately explain what success would look like to you, I can help you reverse engineer what would be the steps to get there. And really, what is the likelihood or is it realistic that you could get there? You know, sometimes when I'm talking to people, they're like, well, you know, I want to get into real estate today and, and make a million dollars tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, here's what you would have to do. It's not likely that that's gonna happen. But if you have realistic expectations and we can help you understand what those are, we can put a plan in place and we can execute on that plan in a daily, weekly, monthly fashion. And what'll happen is you'll see your goals come to realization because you're following a proven plan. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope I've given you some things to think about, uh, but I definitely want you to walk away with this video, not being discouraged by the market out there. Yes, we're in a contracting market. Yes, there's you know fewer transactions than there were you know in the last year or two, but it's still a very good market. And I think an opportunity in a market like this for people to shine that are willing to do the work. So if you need help learning what that work is, reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you see what pieces and, and steps you need to take in order to hit your ideal goals.